Hello and welcome to the video lessons for trigonometry. My first definition over here has to do with angles and I've drawn a general angle over here. It's two rays, the ray OA and the ray OB with a common endpoint and that's called the vertex of the angle. This side right here, OA, I call the initial side and this side OB is the terminal side and I can think of OA as being rotated up around into OB and that's what forms this angle right here, theta. Now, if an angle is measured in a counterclockwise direction like this, it has positive measure. In a clockwise direction like this, we say it has negative measure. As far as degrees go, one degree is one 360th of a full rotation. So if I was to take a ray like this and then rotate it around its vertex, one complete rotation, the angle that I would end up with is an angle of 360 degrees. So one degree of angle measure is one 360th of a full rotation. Now we have some other designations for angles like a right angle, straight angle, acute, obtuse, supplementary and complementary, and I want to look at those next. Here's a right angle like this. A right angle is 90 degrees. Here's the initial side, the terminal side. This is a straight angle. Here's my initial ray and it's been rotated around one half of a full rotation. So half of 360 is 180 degrees. I call that a straight angle. An angle that is between 0 and 90 degrees is called an acute angle. An angle that's bigger than 90 but less than 180, that's an obtuse angle. Here I have two angles that together add up to 90 degrees, angle alpha and angle beta. They're called complementary angles. These two angles right here, alpha and beta, add up to 180 degrees, so they're called supplementary angles. So these are some general designations we have for angles right here, and as we go through the course, you'll see we'll become more and more familiar with them, especially complementary angles and supplementary angles and, of course, right angles. Next, what I want to do is work a couple of problems. For problem number one, I have 45 degrees as the angle. I want to write its complement and its supplement. Well, the complement is the angle that I would add to 45 degrees to end up with 90 degrees. So that is, of course, 45 degrees, which is 90 degrees minus 45 degrees. For the supplement, that's the amount that I would add to 45 degrees to get, 130, to get 180 degrees, so that's 135 degrees. So you can see if my original angle is 45 degrees, its complement is 45 degrees, and its supplement is 135. 135 plus 45 is 180. 45 plus 45 is 90. Our next one is 120 degrees. I have 120 degrees. What would I add to 120 degrees to get 90? The answer is negative 30 degrees. And it's okay to have negative numbers with our angle me measure right here because that stands for an angle that's measured in a clockwise direction from its initial side. Now, if my original angle is 120 degrees, its supplement then is going to be 60 degrees. That's the amount that I would add to 120 degrees to end up with 180 degrees. So I would say the supplement of 120 is 60. Or I could say 60 and 120 are supplementary angles. Next, I have written angle that has x degrees for measure. Its complement, then, is the amount I would add to x to get 90. And that must be 90 minus x. So 90 degrees minus x degrees is going to add with x degrees to 90 degrees. So 90 minus x plus x adds up to 90 degrees. For my supplement right here, it's the amount I would add to x to get 180 degrees. That will be 180 degrees minus x. So even if I don't know specifically what the amount of angle measure is that I have, I can still write an expression for the complement and the supplement. So if my original angle has x degrees in it, its complement will always be 90 minus x, and the supplement will be 180 minus x. And we will use this information from time to time in this course to um, work other problems in trigonometry. Here's our last one. 90 degrees, what's the complement of 90? The complement of 90 is 0 degrees, and the supplement of 90 is 90 degrees. So I have 90 degrees and 0 degrees. They would add up to 90, and 90 plus 90 will be 180 degrees. Next, I want to talk about some special triangles that we have, and the first one uh, has to do with right triangles and is called the Pythagorean Theorem. Here I have a uh, triangle in which one of the angles is a right angle, so this is a right triangle. I've labeled the sides. C is the hypotenuse. That's the longest side. Sides A and B are the legs of this right triangle. Now, what the Pythagorean Theorem says is that in any right triangle, the square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. 
So I could say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, or c is the positive square root of a squared plus b squared. So the Pythagorean theorem is something we're going to use a lot in trigonometry. Let's go to the board and work our first problem using the Pythagorean theorem. We want to solve for x, and I have a right triangle here. The hypotenuse is square root 10, this side is x plus 2, and this side is x. Well, by the Pythagorean theorem, I know that the sum of the squares of these two sides is going to be equal to this side. So x plus 2, quantity squared, plus x squared must be equal to square root 10, quantity squared. I'll square this expression. I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus x squared is equal to the square of the square root of 10, of course, is 10. Now I'll collect similar terms. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared plus 4x. And now let me subtract 10 from both sides to put this quadratic equation in standard form. I add negative 10 to both sides, and I end up with negative 6 or subtract 6 on the left side equals 0. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I end up with x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let me try to factor this. Hopefully it will factor. x, uh, how about x plus 3 and x minus 1. Is that correct? Inside I get 3x, outside negative 1x. They add up to 2x, sure enough. So I set my first factor, x plus 3, equal to 0 or my second factor, x minus 1, is equal to 0. So if x plus 3 is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 3. And if x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. So I get two possible solutions, x equal 1 and x equal negative 3. Now, x, remember, is a side, the length of a side in a triangle, and so it can't be a negative number. So I'm going to have to disallow this one solution, x equal negative 3. So I can't use that because this is an applied problem here x equal 1 is my only solution. So this side is 1, this side will be 3, and then this side, of course, is square root 10. Now, does that make sense? 1 squared plus 3 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1 plus 3 squared is 9. 1 plus 9 is 10. And sure enough, the square of the longest side, square root 10 squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The next thing I want to show you is what's called the spiral of roots. And the spiral of roots is produced using the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So I've drawn it over here on the board, and what's nice about this spiral of roots is that each of these diagonals right here has a length equal to the square root of one of the positive integers here. So this first one is square root 2. This line, this length right here is square root 3, square root 4, square root 5, so on and so forth. So with this spiral of roots, what you can do, you, what, what it gives us is a way to visualize the square roots of all the positive integers. So all these irrational numbers that we have, here we have actual uh, line segments that are whose length is exactly equal to those um, irrational numbers. So what I want to do next is uh, go to the board and show you how to construct this spiral of roots. So here, what you can see is that I've, here's the beginning of my spiral of roots. Here's a line segment of length 1, another si line segment of length 1 at a right angle to my original one. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is connect these, and that'll be my first diagonal. And if I was to call this length right here x, what I would have is that x would be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which would be the square root of 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that has a length square root 2. The next thing I want to do is add on to this point right here another line segment of length 1 at a right angle to this line segment. So I'll get my ruler and do that. So let's see. This will be, I'm going to try to make this as accurate as I can, but it's hard for me to see this. Okay, so there's that line segment. That has a length of 1, and this now is a right angle. So I'll draw this diagonal in right here, and let's call it x. Now for this diagonal right here, x is going to be equal to the square root of square root 2 squared plus 1 squared. Now that will be square root 2 squared is 2, plus 1. So I'm going to have the square root of 2 plus 1, which is the square root of 3. So this diagonal right here has a length square root 3. Next, what I want to do is add on to that. I want to extend out here at a right angle another line segment of length 1. So let's do that. So if I do this, a length uh, 1, 
So this is one unit long. This is a right angle. And now I'll connect my initial point here to the end of that line segment. And now let's call this right here x. x is the square root of the length of this side, which is square root 3, quantity squared, plus the length of this side, which is 1 squared. Well, the square root of 3 squared is 3, so I get 3 plus 1, square root 4. So that's square root 4. So you can see how I can construct this spiral of roots by starting with a line segment of length 1, another line segment of length 1 at right angles. That first diagonal is square root 2. Well, that diagonal then becomes one of the legs in my next right triangle. The other leg is of length 1 also. So I have to connect a line segment here of length 1 at a right angle to this one. Now, that means that this diagonal will be square root 3. Then that becomes one of the legs in my next right triangle. Uh, so I connect this line segment here of length 1 at a right angle. Then this is square root 4. So I'm just going to keep going around like this. So we get square root 2, square root 3, square root 4. The next one, of course, will be square root 5, so on and so forth. Now what I want to do next is look at a couple more special triangles, 30, 60, 90 right triangle and a 45, 45, 90. Let's take a look at those. Here is my 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and it's a right triangle in which one angle is 60 degrees, and so of course the other acute angle must be 30 degrees. Now whenever I have this situation, whatever the shortest side is, and I've labeled it here with T, so the length of the shortest side is T, the longest side or hypotenuse is always twice T, and the third side is always T square root 3. Now that's always the case in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. To see why that's true, you're going to have to look in the book and look at the derivation that we have there. In these video lessons, we're, we're not going to do a lot of derivations. We're going to simply list the properties or theorems or formulas, whatever we have, and then see if we can use them. And that's the same case here. So what you need to know is that in every 30, 60, 90 triangle, the longest side is always twice the shortest side, and the third side is always the shortest side times square root 3. Next is our 45, 45, 90 right triangle, and you can see it's a right triangle in which the two acute angles are each 45 degrees. Whenever that's the case, whatever one of the legs is, whatever the length of one of the legs is, in this case t, the other leg has the same length, so both the legs are going to be t. The hypotenuse then is always t times the square root of 3. And that's always the case whenever we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle like this one right here. So these two facts, these two special triangles right here, you want to memorize the relationship between the sides in them. We want to go to the board now, work a couple of problems based on these, um, these uh, uh, triangles that I've drawn here. Let's take a look. Uh, for the next two problems, it says fill in all sides. And problem number six, I have this triangle. The longest side is labeled with eight, and this angle is 60 degrees, and that, of course, represents a right angle. That means that if this is 60 degrees, this must be 30 degrees here. So I have a triangle that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The longest side is of length eight, so the shortest side is going to be half that amount, which will be four. And the third side will be four times the square root of three. So once you know that you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if you have any one of the sides, you have the other two sides also. It's very easy to fill them in. The next problem I want to do is one that involves a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Here it is. I have a 45 degree angle right here. That's 90 degrees. Therefore, this must be 45 degrees also. I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. The longest side is 4. Let's label the other two sides with x. Now, what I know is this. Um, x, I'm, I'm sorry, 4, has to be the same as x times the square root of 2. Because the longest side in any 45, 45, 90 triangle is always square root of 2 times one of the legs. And the legs are of equal length. So that longest side, 4, must be x times the square root of 2. I'll solve that for x by dividing by square root 2. I get 4 over square root 2. I could leave it like this or in this case, I'll rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root 2 over square root 2. I end up with 4 times square root 2. And on the bottom, square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. I'll divide out the 2 common to the numerator and denominator. I just end up with 2 square root 2. So if the longest side in a 45, 45, 90 triangle is 4, the other two sides are each of length 2 square root 2. Now, does that make sense? If this side right here is 2 square root 2, then the longest side is going to be square root 2 times this. Well, 2 square root 2 times square root 2 again is going to be the same as 2 times 2, which will be 4. So, in fact, it does work. 
I want to look at two last problems, uh, just a couple of problems here to end with that have to do with uh, a couple of things we've talked about in this section. Here they are. Problem number eight, I've written find R if AB is 4 and AD is 8 in this diagram right here. So let's see. Let's find R if AB is equal to 4. So AB is 4. That's this distance right here. And AD is equal to 8. That's this distance. Well, here I have a circle. The radius is R, so I know that this radi radius right here and this one are equal to each other. This length is 8, and I know that this is a right angle. So I'm just going to look in this right triangle, C, D, A. So in that right triangle right there, the length of the longest side, which will be R plus 4, the longest side squared is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So R squared plus 8 squared. So what I have is the Pythagorean theorem right here. The longest side, or hypotenuse, is R plus 4. That squared must be equal to this squared plus this squared. That gives me an equation to solve. Let's see what we can do. I'll square this and get R squared plus 8R plus 16 is equal to R squared plus 64. I'll add negative R squared to both sides, and that will take care of those terms. Now let me add negative 16 to both sides, and I'll end up with 8R is equal to 48. Divide both sides by 8, and R will come out equal to 6. Now does that seem to make sense? If R is equal to 6, then I have a right triangle here where this side is 6, this side is 8, and this side is 4 plus 6, or 10. So a 6, 8, 10 right triangle, and sure enough, that works because 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to 10 squared. Here's our next problem. Problem number 9, it's a cube with a side of length 1, or AC is equal to 1. So this is supposed to represent a cube. That length is 1, so that length is 1, that length is 1. All of them are of length 1. Let's find the length of CH. Well, CH goes from here over to here, it's that diagonal. So let me draw a little picture here so we can look at the right triangle right from its side. This would be this point C. Over here would be D. That's this point, And here is H right there. So this is C, H, that length right there. Well, this is 1, and this is 1. So this, this length right here must be square root 2. So that's that diagonal that goes from C to H. That comes out to be square root 2. Next, I want to find the length of this diagonal, CF, and you can see that CF goes from here over to here. So it's the diagonal of the cube itself, from this vertex or corner right here on the cube all the way over to this opposite corner. Now, that will form a right triangle, CFH. And so one leg of that right triangle is going to be this CH that we just found right here. Let me draw that. So here's this triangle here, C. H, F, and it will look like this. Here's C, H, here's H, F, and then here is F, C. So C, H, F. So C, H, this right here is this diagonal, then H, F, that's this right here, and then here's the length that we're looking for. Well, I know that H, F is going to be 1 because that's one of the sides in the cube. This right here, C, H, I just found that in this diagram. So that's square root 2. So this diagonal right here must be square root of 3 because it's going to be the square root of square root 2 squared plus 1 squared. And square root 2 squared is 2 plus 1 squared, which is 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. I end up with square root 3. So the diagonal of this cube that goes from this corner to the opposite corner turns out to be square root 3. The diagonal of one of the faces of the cube comes out to be square root 2, and from that I get the diagonal of the whole, cu whole cube, which is square root 3. So in this first section, what we've done is looked at some of the basic definitions and theorems that we're going to be using throughout the course.